Hello. So, thank you for all your hard work last week with Unifine. That was really fun to do that case study and to see the ideas that people had. So, I think we've built up enough now that we can start to tackle one of the fundamental questions in algorithms, which is what is the time complexity of an algorithm? What this means is basically how long does it take for an algorithm to run? And we tend to think of this in relative terms. Um, which algorithms are faster relative to others? And we're going to quantify this mathematically, actually. But so I, I'll tell you, as a person who does both math and computer science, um, a really good way to work at this is to do experiments first. So we're still going to do some experiments um, to help us figure out what questions we're asking. So what hypotheses do we have about which algorithms are faster than other ones? Um, then we will develop um, a rigorous mathematical framework. So rigorous just means basically acceptable to mathematicians. So it's going to involve some kind of um, definitions and proofs. Okay. Um, but I'll show you it's, uh, the kind of proofs we do aren't going to be terrible. Okay. But first, let's, let's stay in maybe in the computer science comfort zone for, for a moment. And we'll do some more experiments. So we did union find last week. Um, I'm going to look at a different problem now that's a little bit simpler in some ways. Um, and that problem is finding duplicate elements in arrays, or just seeing if there is a duplicate element in an array, um, or a list as Python call, calls it. So we, we want to um, return true. Well, I guess I'll define the method and put the comment there. So, so let me say def um, has duplicates. So we're going to pass in, an, or, or I'll call it r, ar for list. Um, and you know this this method is supposed to um, figure out if there is an element that's repeated in the array. All right, so we just pass in a single array, um, which holds a bunch of bunch of elements, and we're going to um, return true if there is a duplicate false if every element is unique. Okay. So for example, um, so here I'm actually, I'm in an environment called Jupyter Notebook, by the way. This, this may be new to people in this class. Um, I'll slowly introduce you to it because it'll help us in the next assignment. Uh, but it's a nice way that you can, it's kind of like the, the next version of that little interactive console that you have in Spider. Um, you can create little cells of code and execute each cell, uh, but in the middle of the cells you can actually write stuff. So this, this is going to be nice and convenient for me as I'm writing notes as I go along, since we're doing a little more math now. Okay. Uh, but it also allows us to make GUIs, and that's going to be helpful because we're going to be doing autocomplete. Um, and I want actually a little menu to pop up with autocomplete options. Okay, much easier to do in Jupyter than, than Spider. Okay, anyway, but so one, another cool thing about Jupyter is, um, so I want to generate, just to test this out, I'm going to generate a random list of elements. So NumPy has a method called, um, in its random package, called randint. And if I, if I hit a question mark and then run this code, um, Oh, maybe I think I have to run this first. Okay. <laughs> um, there we go. So it pops up with um, documentation right here that I can read. I don't even have to Google anything. Um, so it tells me that this, this takes a parameter low, which is the lowest value that it, it's going to return, some random value. High is the highest value. Um, actually, one above, sorry, one above the largest, just like it would be in range. Um, and then you can actually choose, there's a third parameter, which is optional, um, that says, well, how many of these do you want to do? And that's what we need for the list. Okay, so cool. I was able to bring up the documentation with that. So let me make a random list now. So I'll say array is equal to mp.random.randint. Um, I can say smallest value can be a zero. Maybe largest value is, is 99. So, so one more than that. Um, and I guess I'll take 50 of them. Okay. So there we go. There's this a random list that we can test. Now let's think about an algorithm to do this. So a simple one um, is to look at all pairs. 
of elements in here. So I'll say 4x in the array, 4y in array. So this will actually go through all pairs because it's a for every element in the array, look at every element in the array. So, so that will get me all pairs. Um, actually, I need to do a little more than this because I need to make sure that I'm not on the same element. So let me also index them. So I'll say 4i, x, and enumerate the array. So I'll have an index to go along. So I'll say x is at index i, and then I'll say um, y is at index j. Okay. So basically, as long as I'm not at the same index, uh, but I happen to find that x is y, then I have a duplicate. So I'll start off assuming that I do not have a duplicate until proven otherwise. Innocent until proven guilty. Okay. But now we're guilty. We got a duplicate. So if I'm at um, a different index and I find that the two elements are the same, then I'm going to return true. Okay. So let's check. Um, and actually, maybe for debugging purposes for a moment, I'll throw a print statement in here and actually print out the indices and what the value is. So let's see. In this, well, I'll make another random array. This is going to run again. And I'll say, OK, has, maybe print has duplicate pairs. All right. OK. So in this one, oops, I meant to say duplicates pairs. OK, in this one, there's a bunch, actually. So we find index 1, index 5, 69. OK, so there it is, 69, 69. Actually, it also tells us index 5, index 1. OK. Because it's going for every element, for every element. So it actually goes, it, 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 we'll find that twice. OK. We find that um, the number 27 happens to be at index 4 and also at index 27, by coincidence. OK, so we see there are a bunch of duplicates. So basically, you better return true. OK. Now, what I'm really interested in is, is figuring out how long this takes to run. So I imported a library called time up here, which we can use to do that. Um, and here's what I'll do. So, so now I'm not actually as interested in what the answer is, because I'm going to trust that this is right. Obviously, I should test it a little more rigorously, but, but it's right Okay, for now. Uh, no, but now I'm more interested in, in how long does this take to run. So um, let's make sure, just to control the experiment a little bit, I'm going to um, seed the random number generator, which means that it's going to give me the same array each time I run the cell. Okay, same pseudo-random, not random, but it has random properties, but it's repeatable. Let me just show you, actually. Um, if I don't have the seed, um, the array is going to be a little different each time. OK, so see that was different. But if I seed it, now it's the same every time. OK, so I'm trying to control the experiment. Um, OK, so here's what I'll do. Um, I use a convention that, that is from my days of programming MATLAB. Um, so MATLAB had this thing, tick tock. So if I say tick is equal to time dot time, so time dot time returns the current wall clock time in seconds. Um, so, and it goes into decimal places. So you, you can go actually down to, to beyond milliseconds. Okay. Um, so anyway, I, that's going to be the first wall clock time. Now I'm going to run my thing, and I'm going to say, okay, talk equals time dot time. That's the wall clock time after these have run. And if I do talk minus tick, actually MATLAB would do that automatically at this point, but, but we have to write one more line. And uh, oh, let me get rid of this print statement in here so it doesn't keep printing out all the duplicates. Um, okay, we see this, this runs pretty quick, 0, 0.0, okay. Um, it doesn't take zero time to run, definitely takes a little bit of time, but I guess we, you know, we need a larger problem size to really see. So let me actually generate, um, maybe I'll generate, uh, let's see, numbers between 0 and 10,000, I'll generate 5,000 of them. So just add a few zeros here. Okay, now this is taking a little longer. Okay, so that took 2.637 seconds. Let's run it again. 2.72, so this one took longer. Why did it take longer? I, I gave the same input. Why does it take longer? Well, I'm sorry to say, but as much as you think that your algorithm is important, there's a lot of other things going on in the computer. 
So my computer right now is recording me talking to you. Um, it's, it's also running a whole bunch of sort of maintenance processes in the background. And so it can be kind of random. Um, you're, you know, you're sharing resources. Some, some things that are happening in the background may sh slow you down a little bit. So when we're running these experiments, um, to get really more accurate um, readings on what the times are, we have to repeat the experiment many times and take averages. So I have the skeleton of, of a method up here that, um, actually let me, let me delete these and, and start over so that I find it's helpful if I talk as I type because that kind of keeps a good pace here. So um, I'm going to make a helper method that takes as input um, a number of ranges that, that, that I want to go over. Um, how many trials to do for each range of, of input size. And that's actually going to take two functions, which is interesting. You can actually pass functions as parameters. Okay, so let me now be very specific and type these all out. So ends, this is a range. So it's a Python range. And this is the, the range of input sizes I want to try on my algorithm. Okay, num trials, that's an int. Um, that should be the number of experiments I perform for each input size in my range. Okay. Um, gen, now this is going to be a function. So this is a function from, uh, really from n to a problem instance. So this is a function that's going to generate a random problem for my algorithm to solve. Um, of a particular size. And then finally, I have the algorithm itself, which takes as input a problem. Um, so this is also a function. Um, and then outputs you know, the solution. Um, now here, again, we're not actually worried about the solution. We're more, we're more worried about timing things. But still, OK. So this is the actual algorithm to solve the problem. OK, so let me just fill in this code real quick to do these experiments. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to plot, actually, how long did it take on average over a range of sizes. So our independent variable here is, is the, the, um, the number of sizes. So I'll say, um, I guess I'll just call that, um, let me rename this. I don't want a naming clash. Um, so I'll say ends, that, that's going to be the sizes. And then I'll have another variable, which is, which is average times. Okay, so what I have to do is, is loop through. So I'll say for um, n, actually let me use big N because um, that is the convention when we talk about problem sizes. Okay, so for big N in n's range. Um, okay, now what I want to do is generate a problem. So I'll say problem equals gen n. Um, and then I'm going to say tick equals time dot time. Then I'm going to run my algorithm on that problem. So look how nice this is. I mean, it's so cool in Python that everything is so flexible that you can pass functions along. This, I'm writing like totally general code that I could use on any algorithm that I want to test. Okay, and then I say tox equal time dot time. And what I'll do is I'll say ends dot pend that will add the element. Um, so, so I just did an experiment at this size. And then I'll say average times to append um, time. Now, so, so really, OK, I don't have a time variable yet. This is really supposed to be the average time. So I, so I need to put this in a loop, actually. So I'll say for i in range um, num trials. So I need to, for a particular size, do this experiment um, a bunch of times. And I will save the result um, into a list, or into a NumPy array. And what I'll really do is, is I'll say, OK, let me, let me actually, so NumPy has a nice um, method in it called mean. And that's going to allow me to, um, to take the mean of, of all the, the trials that I did for this, for this size. OK, 
So now I can go ahead and plot this. Um, so n is my independent variable, the size of the problem, the times is the dependent variable. Um, so I'll say ends and then my y label always got to label your axes. So so my my y label is time. Okay. All right. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to copy this down here so I remember the parameters. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to test out this algorithm here. Um, this algorithm has duplicates pairs. So let's say I'll test it from a problem size, let's say starting at uh, maybe 10 in size, going up to 210 in increments of 20. Okay. How many trials? Let's say I'll do 10 for every size. Okay, now I need my, my um, code to generate a problem. So I'll define it here. I'll say define um, gen rand array of size n. So that's just going to return mp.random.rand int. I guess I'll say um, numbers from 0 up to n times 3, and I want n of them. Okay, so that will generate a random problem size. So I'll pass along, that's my generator. And then my algorithm that I'm testing is has duplicates pairs. Let's see if they did all this right. <laughs> Probably a bug somewhere, but we'll see. No, actually it looks fine. Okay, cool. Um, so that worked. So what we're seeing is as we get larger problem sizes, this takes more time on average. Um, let, let's go a little bit further. So, so maybe go up to 400 here. Um, Okay, so I can kind of see if you you know you might recognize this. This is certainly more than a line. I, I you know this this is going to be above any line that I try to fit to it. So we say that this is super linear in time complexity, um, or at least that's what we're going to try to prove. So um, as I add more instances, it's going to take more than what I added. Okay. Now the question is, can we do better than this? So there is a pretty basic modification I can do even to just this idea that's, that's going to help us um, to do better. So, so I guess I'll just call this um, improved. So it's going to, you know, has the same API, same input and output. But um, one of the things here is I'm repeating work, right? So if I consider, um, if you consider all the pairs, let's look at an example. So let's say I have four elements, um, which are 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, the pairs are going to be um, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, um, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. So there are six of these. Okay. Um, but if we look at the original here, okay, so what this is going to do, this is going to loop through four, and then for each one of them, I'm going to loop through four again. So, so this is actually going to go through 16. This is going to go through 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. 1, 0, 1, 2, um, 2, 2, 2, 3. Right? We're, we're redoing some work. And remember, I pointed out before that when we ran this, it actually found, found our duplicates twice for, for every time they happened. Um, so that's not good. So we, we can save time by just looking. So we notice when, when I enumerated the pairs here, um, the second index was always greater than the first index. So what I can do is I can just say, um, in my second loop, I'll say 4j in range i plus 1 length of the array. OK, so, so I, I know that j is always supposed to be strictly greater than um, i. So, so I should be able to go faster here. And yeah, now I know that i is not equal to j. So I'll just say if x, um, you know, I do have to pull out y now. Okay, so, so this should um, be faster. So let's compare it. Um, same generator for the problem, just different uh, problem. Or sorry, different algorithm to solve the problem. So improved. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two experiments now. 
I'm going to plot them next to each other. And I'll say, you know, original pairs. And I'll say improved pairs so that they, these have some labels here. So let's run it and see what we get. And indeed, um, this new one that we did is faster, so that's pretty cool. Um, we're going through fewer than half of the, the pairs that we did before. Um, and so we see that in practice, and that's cool. Uh, but you could do even better than this. So I'm going to do a quick exercise. Uh, I want to, let's do a quick exercise where you um, do the following. So you can actually, instead of um, looking at every pair like this, you can sort the array first, and then you know the things that are duplicates um, are going to be next to each other. So you can do much better. Okay. So give that a shot. We'll come back, and I'll show you um, the curve for that. And then uh, we'll take it from there.